Yo what's up guys welcome to my humble youtube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. That time I got a socket as a slime. Danmachik's T Tiggers, by a walker 0641. Chapter 14. Student of the Demon Lord it was a new day and I was so excited I was barely able to sleep last night. Today was the day I was going to start training under Mr. Tempest. It was weird to call him that the way he looked. With eyes that were the color of pure gold, a porcelain face with petite pink lips, and long silvery blue hair. With a look like that anyone could mistake him for a goddess. I did a couple of times but I was able to catch it before I said it out loud. A look like that would probably match that of a goddess of beauty. But in the end he is a guy just like me. I get off the couch where I was trying to sleep. I was anxious and excited for today that I was not able to get much rest. My second day being an adventurer and I was going to be trained in combat. I was beyond lucky for someone to be wiling to teach me. Usually a person in your familia would train you in dungeon exploring and fighting. But since I am the only person in my familia there would be no one to train me. Well that is what Miss Aina said. So I guess I just lucked out that Mr. Tempest was willing to take me under his wing. He said it was a way to for me to repay him but I just feel even more indebted to him. I'd have to find a way to pay him back somehow. As I stretch my body from laying on the couch, I walk over to the bathroom. I pull a washcloth out of the cabinet, wet it, and wipe down my face. I head back to the kitchen and turn on the stovetop to cook some eggs. I have to admit that the money that he gave to me sure helped us a lot with being able to get food and paying for some gear to wear. I look at the eggs and hear them sizzle on the pan and I salt and pepper them. I hear a groan and I look back to the living, bedroom to see that goddess is turning in her bed. I'm surprised that she is already stirring this early in the morning. It must be the smell of the eggs reaching her. I know that my belly is rumbling. As I cook I can only think how much has changed, from grandpa passing away to traveling to Orario and finding a familia. I was not sure if I was going to be able to find a god to join with how many times I was rejected. I was thinking about giving up, that was until I ran into Mr. Tempest. I was scared at first but it was like he projected an aura of kindness that put me at ease. I could only oblige him when he wanted to talk to me. And when I told him of my dream he only encouraged me, he didn't laugh or ridicule me for a dream that seemed so childish. That filled me with determination. Then as goddess came up to me and she asked if I wanted to join her familia, I not only filled with happiness but I knew I was taking my first steps to accomplishing my dream. Now I'm going to be trained. I felt like everything is going to be okay. I have two people willing to help me accomplish my dream. I could not be happier. I finished cooking the eggs and put one on a plate for me and put the stove on low so that the egg is still warm for goddess when she gets up. I ate rather quickly put my plate in the sink, brush my teeth, and put on my equipment. I opened the door and looked back at goddess. I'll see you tonight goddess, I whispered to her. She only replied with an incomprehensible noise. I head up the stairs as I close the door behind me into the church. I passed the broken altar where the statue of a goddess was. I felt bad seeing this place in such a rough shape but there was not much we could do about it. I looked up at the sky to see it was still dark out. It would not be light for another hour or so but that did not matter. I passed the pews and headed out the door. The place Mr. Tempest would be it was a bit far but I knew where to go. A familia home that I wasn't able to join was near there. So I headed off into the dark. It was a little bit later when I was made it to my destination. It was a two-story tall wooden building that was not run down like the other. That is what some people would say. But just saying that would not do it justice. It had a dark stained wooden siding that were half logs running vertically to the ground. There was crystalline windows and the roof had fresh gray shingles. The trim was a dark spruce that went along the windows and the roof. The doors were the same match as the trimming. I was amazed at how new and expensive it looked. Though how did I miss it? I thought I traveled by this area last week. Good morning kid. I looked over to where the man who was going to teach me was standing waving at me from from the doorway. So I bowed. Good morning Mr. Tempest. I'm looking forward to being trained. As I look up I could see him wearing happy smile. And I look forward to teaching you, but could you drop the mister? It makes me feel old. Okay, but what should I call you then? I can't call him by his first name since it would be disrespectful. 
Hmm. Well then call me teacher or master if you want. All right then master. I give him an excited smile. He comes up to me and puts an arm around my shoulder. He shakes me a little. Well let's get inside and get started shall we? I nod as we start to walk inside. As we go in I had to pause a moment to let my eyes readjust to the lighting. I see the light glinting off newly polished floors. The walls were light wood planks that looked coarse, yet, were extremely smooth. There was some training equipment that I had no idea what they were. Leaning on the wall I could see a pitch black wooden katana sitting there. It seemed as though no light that came into contact with it could escape. As I continue to marvel at how beautiful the building is master speaks up. So how do you like the place? It was just recently built, but you could have guessed that. It's amazing. I never have seen a place like this. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I was wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. I got to admit though, it looks a lot better than I thought it would. With how expensive it was and how long it took. I could only imagine at how much this costed and the length of time it took to build. It probably cost more than all the things I have ever owned put together, along with the labor, which was most likely a familia headed by a god of construction. This place is expensive. And I'm training here. I could not feel my body due to the amount of anxiety I was feeling. Hmm. What's wrong, kid? You feeling ill? And no, just a little overwhelmed. Em hum. Okay. Master raises an eyebrow at me but then shrugs. He walks over and grabs the wooden sword. He walks back over to me and relaxes the weapon on his shoulder. So, what type of weapon are you going to use? Or do you use a weapon? I reach into my pouch on my leg and pull out my weapon. I use a knife for fighting. He extends a hand out. Do you mind if I look at it? I give it to him and he scrutinizes the blade. He flips it a couple of times in his hand and makes a slash. And what rank are you? Rank. Does he mean level? Well since I'm beginning, I'm level 1. He looks at me with a quirked eyebrow then it changes to a face of understanding. He gives me the knife back. I see. Well since you're beginning that will do for now. But as you get stronger you will have to get a much better weapon and a longer reaching one for lower levels. But you probably already know that. I just nod. He takes a couple of steps back, since I'm going to teach you I want to see where you are right now in terms of fighting ability. Alright. But I'll be using a real weapon. Want your sword break? He smiles and laughs a little. It's fine. This piece of wood is a lot stronger than it looks. Don't worry about it. And besides if it can break, I won't get hurt. I give a nod in response to his oddly worded statement. I extend my hand forward and spread my legs a little. He just tilts his head before he shrugs. He then puts both of his hands on his sword. Hey. I breath in then out. Alright kid. Here I come. I get ready. Yet, what happened next became a blur. I swore I saw his eyes turn red and then disappear in a gust of wind. My eyes widened as I turned my head side to side. The next thing I hear was a thwack and then I blacked out. When I come to, I had a serious headache. I put my hand on the back of my head to try and ease the pain. I could feel a soft pillow under my head. I blink a couple of times as a moan of pain escapes my lips. I sit up to see him crouching in front of me. He then stands up and puts a hand on his head as the other goes to his thigh. I could see him frowning. Sorry kid guess I must have went a little far. He bows to me. I thought that you would not get hurt but apparently I was wrong. I stand up and bow over. No, it's my fault for being so weak. If I was stronger I would not be hurt. I'm sorry. A few seconds pass before I look up a little to only meet a finger hitting my forehead. I stand up and hold my forehead and he crosses his arms while looking into my eyes. Sigh. Look kid I don't know why you're saying sorry. This is my fault for knocking you out. I'm sorry about that. But I did get what I needed to assess your strength. And let me tell you, we have a lot of thing to work on. But I. As I try to apologize again but was only met with a flick to the head. You don't need to apologize for anything Bell. Okay. So let's get to training. Unless you want me to knock you out again? I shake my head no he nods and takes a step back. Yet there is question I have to ask. Master, how long was I out for? He looks off to the side as a bit of his tongue sticks out the side of his mouth. Oh you know, not long. About 30 minutes. My jaw drops. 30 minutes? Oh no, I wasted his time. I was about to apologize before he shoots me a look that makes me stop. His face relaxes as he speaks. Alright, so let's fix your stance and. 
30 minutes passed before my training comes to an end. My whole body ached and I could feel the bruises I got, but I knew that I am improving. I was sweating heavily as I had taken off my jacket and bag about 5 minutes in because of how physical it was. Yet I was amazed to see my teacher still wearing a jacket while not even dropping a bit of sweat. That's a high leveled adventurer for you. As that thought crossed my mind a question came up. What level is master? But before I could ask it he threw me a vial. Uh. What is this? I tilt my head to look at the blue liquid inside. It's one of my potions. I. I can't accept this, with all you have done for me. I. Yet before I could finish he put his hand up to stop me and rolled his eyes. He pointed at the vial and then me. You should drink it because you were hurt. You should not go into the dungeon while injured. That will just lead to a quick death which no one wants. It's better to be at completely healthy when entering the dungeon only to come back out injured than go in injured and come out dead. And that especially goes for you since you were just beginning. I could see the logic in what he said. No matter how much I did not want to accept this I do not want to leave goddess alone again and let down Mr. Tempest. I bring the potion up to my lip and drink it down. As I polished of the potion I could all of a sudden feel my body feeling rejuvenated and my injuries fade. It felt like I just woke up from an excellent rest. I put on my coat and bag and look at my mentor. I bow to my him and thank him. I turn around to leave. As I exit through the door I look back. I'll see you tomorrow Mr. Tempest. He smiles at me and waves. I was off to the dungeon with a smile on my lips. Who is the real trainer? Alright kid, here I come. I could see the kid was a rookie. I would probably be at his level or lower if I did not have the aid of Great Sage when I was starting out. I was surprised to see what shape his knife was in. I could tell it was really cheap and easy to break. A few swings against monsters below the fifth floor and it'd break. But he shouldn't really be facing anything like that for a while. I ready my Bakken but I did not know how to exactly test him since he did not really have any prior combat experience. I decided to let Raphael do the testing. Hey Raphael, do you know where to start? Less than affirmative. Testing the individual's spatial awareness would be a good start, greater than. Alright, then I'll let you do it. Deciding to see how Raphael would handle this I switched with my partner. The next thing I knew was that we were behind Bell and he was unconscious. Less than test complete. Bell is lacking in sensing the area around him. Greater than yeah, I see that. But did you have to knock him out? I could only sigh at the lack of response. As come I back in control I put a pillow down by Bell's head and I was about to roll him over when I noticed a black mark on his back. I take my finger and try to rub it off yet it stayed on. So I lifted up his shirt to see what it was. To my surprise there's writing on his back. Raphael. Can you translate this? 